many pictures of the mother represent aspects of her with which perhaps you are not familiar or with which you are not always in tune that may be one of the answers another answer is that the pictures which you do not appreciate are those which the mother grants to certain people who are very particular about them and who appreciate them very much as editor of mother india you have the chance of exper expressing something about the future poetry especially as you had the rare opportunity of intimate correspondence with shri arbindo i don't know whether my being an editor qualifies me to answer this question but perhaps i became an editor or was chosen by shri arbindo and the mother to be one because something in me had opened to shri arbindo's inspiration from the overhead flames which is the chief part of what he calls the future poetry now amal why does the mother give so much freedom to us instead of pushing us forward or stopping our wrong moments this yoga is said to be evolutionary nothing can evolve and become a part of one's nature unless it is developed in perfect freedom and is not something superimposed the whole universe the mother has said was created in freedom and it can fulfill itself also if all those who are cooperating in its development are perfectly free looking at people here don't you feel we are about to create a new religion there is a certain tendency in, in people here to be exclusive and to say that this yoga is superior to all other yogic paths but by and large i think people do understand that neither sri aurobindo nor the mother intend to create a new religion religions all belong to what they have called the overmind the world of the great gods what sri aurobindo and the mother want to manifest is the world of the supermind which is above all religions and i think they are succeeding fairly well in spite of old habits and conventions lingering in the minds of certain disciples that was wonderful compared with raman ashram the atmosphere here is not peaceful on darshans the place is rather unpleasantly crowded what is still the secret of attraction i think the peace here has to be understood in a special way it is a peace that must exist simultaneously with activity in raman ashram the stress is on peace here the stress is on a new life whose basis is peace but with a new activity radiating from that source and i would add that here you have two atmospheres there is the vast pervading atmosphere of the presence of the mother and sri aurobindo and there is also an atmosphere which is a bit of a hodgepodge made up of the common movements of so many people's minds and it is very necessary that one should stay in contact with that luminous spiritual atmosphere and not get easily caught up in the other that was rather wonderful amal now amal is it necessary for the transformation to stay here 
This refers to the experience you had in the train in connection with the supermind's manifestation. In order to be inwardly in touch with the mother and Sri Aurobindo, it is not necessary to stay here all the time. But there is a concentration of spiritual power here. And time and again one has to come to the source to drink the essential nectar. Also, when the work of transformation comes down to the very physical, it is absolutely necessary to be near the, the physical being of the mother, which is undergoing transformation. As regards my experience in the train, I think its background is my long stay here, because without it, I would not have been in such intimate contact with the mother that she could remember a promise given to me about 18 years earlier that when the supramental manifestation took place, she would immediately inform me in some way or other. Now, Amal, what is the meaning of Om on the foundation stone of the Matri Mandir? Could you tell us that? I couldn't be sure of my answer, but I would venture to say Om is the living spiritual vibration of the universal divine. Auroville is, is meant to be a universal phenomenon. It is open to all people of goodwill and idealism. And Om would be a call to the whole wide world. Again, Om, representing the universal vibration, is naturally connected up with the creative action of the mother, the mother who is also the world mother no less than the transcendental supra-cosmic Shakti. Amal, can you tell us what is the value of a yogi for humanity? A yogi is valuable to humanity to the extent that he does not dehumanize himself by his yoga. He does not merely divinize himself by his yoga, but brings the fruits of his yoga to all mankind. The ashram is centered round the mother. What is left without her? I don't think there can be left anything without the mother. But I don't understand why we should at all think of an ashram with the mother left out. The mother's work is to complete and fulfill what Sri Aurobindo has wanted to do. And that is a complete divinization of her very physical being. And one of the results of that divinization would be the, the ability on her part to continue living as long as she wants and as she thinks she is necessary for her work. Now, in this connection I would ask, are there higher developed personalities to continue her, continue her work? There are personalities in the ashram who have a pretty high development, but at present I don't think anybody could stand by the side of the mother. But what they can do more and more is to be her instruments, her, her, her radiating centers for the world. But that then does not mean that the mother will leave the ashram and any of them would take over. Such a thing cannot be thought of and it is not necessary to be thought of because it is no part of the work of Sri Aurobindo. 
the mother will be with us. That was wonderfully explained, Amal. Now, Amal, is the flame child born? Could you explain this? It is a very poetic question, but it emerges from the, the spiritually realistic poetry of Savitri. I understand by the flame child, the psychic being, the soul of, of all the world getting radiated with its fountain light, which is the supermind. And I believe that after the 5th of December 1950, when as a result of Sri Aurobindo's strategic sacrifice, the mother realized what he had called the mind of light in herself. And after 29th February 1956, when the supramental manifestation took place. After these two great events, we can say that the flame child has certainly taken birth and is fast growing. What does the ashram mean for the world? The ashram is the nucleus of a new humanity. The first place where an experiment is being carried on to bring about in the next step in evolution, just as a mental race came about millions of years ago. Similarly, a race of supermen, or rather men who have given themselves up to the supramental light, will develop into a new race which will mark a tremendous progress for the whole world because the power to solve all the problems which the human mind cannot solve will be there available at all times. Now one last question, Amal. Why is the ashram not doing social work? Social work is not the be-all and end-all of all existence. It is an important part of life, but everybody is not called upon to do social work. If a Shakespeare or a Dante or even a Goethe were to be compelled to do social work as a duty, the world would be a great loser because all the creative work will suffer. Besides, social work by itself has never solved the fundamental problems of the earth. And there are hundreds and thousands of people who are really called by something in themselves to do social work. We in the ashram are called to solve the problem of humanity by some sort of a radical cure, which is a complete change of consciousness. When the complete change of consciousness comes about, there will be no need of social work. All the social evils will be abolished. No, Amar, there is a last, very last question. If you would be so kind to read out your favorite lines from Savitri. There are many passages in Savitri which are my favorites. I think I shall pick out just the one which was my first favorite. It occurs in Book 1, Canto 2. It is a description of Savitri. And in this long description, there is a passage which seems to me the very heart of the, re the revelation of her true being. It goes like this. As in a mystic and dynamic dance, a priestess of immaculate ecstasies, inspired and ruled from truth's revealing vault, 
moves in some prophet cavern of the gods. A heart of silence in the hands of joy, inhabited with rich creative beats, a body like a parable of dawn that seemed a niche for veiled divinity or golden temple door to things beyond.